I'm Teresa Young, Relationship Master Coach, and welcome to your Making Moves Motivation. Helping you to truly have the fullness of love, life, and relationships of all kinds that you desire and deserve. For today's motivation, I would like you to think about how are you taking care of your spirit? Before I get into the nitty gritty of this video, I just want to check did you get a chance to watch part one, two, and three of this four part Making Moves Motivation video series on how to strengthen the mind body connection? If not, go and do so, please. Because in part one, I describe the power between the mind body connection. Part two, I provide you with three ways to nourish your mind. And part three is all about three ways to nourish your body. And I will drop links to those videos in the comment section or description section below so that you don't miss out on those videos. For now, I am going to share with you ways that I have in my wellbeing toolbox in order to take care of your spirit. But what is spirituality? Spirituality is a broad concept with many viewpoints. I feel that the description by the University of Minnesota sums it up really nicely, whereby they say, in general, it includes a sense of connection to something bigger than ourselves, and it typically involves a search for meaning in life. I like that definition. For me, spirituality is a connection to a source energy. Now, whether you call that energy, the angels, God, goddess, source, the divine, the universe, the higher power, the creator, all that is. Whatever you want to call it, just know that you are fully cherished and supported and you are not alone. And by connecting and setting your intentions with this energy, you are able to manifest the love, the life and the relationships of all kinds that you truly desire and deserve. And that is for the highest good of all concerned. So, here are three ways to nourish your spirit. However, before I continue, if you've not already subscribed to this channel, then remember to do so. And turn your notifications on by clicking that bell, so you don't miss out on more life-transforming content to live your best life. And if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Now, let's get back to today's topic. Number one is mindfulness practices. Would you be surprised if I was to tell you that meditation is a great way to eliminate stress by bringing you a calmer, quieter and more focused state of mind? Meditation used to be considered to be alternative or hippie, but not anymore. And you may have heard many celebrities and famous people talking about the benefits of meditation for themselves. Regular meditation, especially if done daily can help to increase your overall sense of well-being and bring about greater vitality. It can deepen the connection with yourself, your intuition and bring you back a greater understanding of your mind. It can also help you to feel that you can rise above any challenges. Now the type of meditation and duration is entirely up to you. It's important that you choose a length and a type of meditation that feels natural to you, especially if it's something that you can incorporate daily. Now there are so many different types of meditations out there that you can find online and guided meditations is a great way to start if you are new to the practice. Not only has meditation helped me in my overall life, but practices such as yoga, reflexology, reiki and prayer have all been practices and techniques that have helped to increase my overall well-being, my mental, my emotional and my physical well-being. And I would encourage you to check those aspects out if it sounds appealing to you. Number two is angel guidance. I believe in angels. I really do. I do believe in angels who are pure, divine, spiritual beings of light, who are here to love, support, encourage, protect and guide us in all aspects of our life. 
and that can be particularly comforting and uplifting especially if you feel that we are alone or that we have nobody to talk to or that nobody gives a damn the angels are ready to connect with every single person and you may be asking do you have to have some sort of training or special gift in order to connect with the angels and the answer to that is no the angels are here and ready to connect with every single person i am in actual fact a certified angel guide that's helped me to have a thriving relationship with my angels to be able to interpret and receive their messages and also to notice their daily presence not only that, I'm able to set up a safe and sacred place for other people to connect with their angels and for them to have healing, protection and guidance through professional sessions. So no, you don't have to have any superpower. You don't have to be any religious guru. In actual fact, the angels are non-denominational. So it doesn't matter about your spiritual or religious beliefs at all. They are ready to connect with you. But because of free will, you have to ask them for help and support. They cannot intervene unless you ask them. But once you do, they are ready to connect with you and fully support you. So you may be asking, how do you connect with your angels? We well, you have to ensure that you are creating space in order to listen to their guidance because there are various different signs and messages and reminders that they will present to you. You can communicate with them verbally or you can communicate with them in your mind. However you decide to do it, just know that they are there. May the angels always be by your side because they are. So here are a few ways that you can connect with your angels. Angel oracle cards are a great way for you to connect with the angels. The cards give you a piece of advice or encouragement and guidance. And this is what I do on a daily basis. Each morning I pull an angel oracle card that provides me with some form of guidance, focus and encouragement for the day. In actual fact, recently I got a new deck of oracle cards, which is the Angel Wisdom Tarot Cards by Radley Valentine that has really been providing me with some great guidance for the day and also for my life and my relationships in general and I would encourage you to go online and find a deck that is one that resonates with you one that appeals to you so that you can start receiving guidance from the angels in a very clear manner angels will also use angel numbers to connect with you have you ever spotted that you may see the numbers one 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 one, two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 repeated numbers. It might be on number plates, doors, it might be telephone numbers, any place really, clocks. Now the angels can communicate with us through numbers. 1212 is also a number that many people do see along with mirror numbers. So the number might flip, you might have 1331, you know, 1331, if you didn't quite understand what I was getting out there. But the angels will communicate with you through angel numbers. And when I first started connecting with my angels, I said to my sister, girl, I keep seeing one, one, one on the clock. What does this mean? And she said, you know what? It's the angels communicating with you. Have a look online to see what that is all about. And when I researched angel numbers and the other numbers that I was getting, particularly 1212, 12, I realized that there were messages in those numbers and you can delve deep into what the angels are trying to say to you. So I would encourage you, if you are receiving numbers and you're seeing repeated numbers several times, to go online and have a look at an angel number tool so that you can get some clarity as to the guidance that the angels are trying to provide to you, particularly on a daily basis. Not only that there are many other ways that the angels can communicate with you and you can communicate with the angels, again, go online and find something that resonates with you. The angels also communicate with me through music. Yes, song titles and also song lyrics. And I think, aha, uh -huh, thank you angels, I take that on board. So again, explore and have fun. Number three is gemstones and crystals. I am a huge fan of gemstones and crystals and I've been a huge advocate of their healing abilities for donkey's years. Now, I feel that by working with the right stones, it has brought about great benefit to my life. And this is going to sound a little woo-woo to some people, because whilst there isn't any scientific 
evidence to back up that the stones have healing abilities or that they work. Many people, including myself, do believe in their healing abilities and their ability to maximise people's overall sense of psychological and also physical well-being. There are so many, many stones out there. Commonly known ones and some of my favourites are amethyst, are rose quartz, clear quartz, hematite, black onyx, tiger stone there's so many out there and you can find out what each stone can do for you online and there are many ways in which you can work with stones typical ways of working with the stones is to place the stones and crystals you know the gemstones around your home or work area you may also carry them in pouches or in pockets so people will carry a selection of pocket stones now i actually don't wear many clothes that have so I place the stones in my bra yes in my bra and here is one I made earlier <laughs> not only that you can carry them in a pouch or on jewelry now you may have spotted that in my videos I wear a number of gemstone and crystal necklaces so today in this video I'm wearing black onyx in the previous video it was amethyst in the video before that it was rose quartz and in the video before that it was lapis lazuli not only that there's various different bracelets as well i've got my rose quartz i've got my clear quartz i've got my amethyst and also i've got my hematites so there's so many ways in which you can wear that and also people will meditate with stones too so if this has piqued your interest and you're thinking hmm how can gemstones and crystals help me particularly if i have an ailment i would encourage you to go online have a little bit of a research and have fun because you just never know what the healing abilities of gemstones and crystals might do for you so there you have it three ways to nourish your spirit and it is the end of the four part making with motivation video series on how to strengthen the mind body connection I really do hope that you have found it helpful and that you have now got a greater insight into what is in my wellbeing toolbox. Now, I have quite a few items in my toolkit. There's so much more I could have shared with you, but I don't want to send you into overwhelm. I'll save that for another series, perhaps. But for the time being, I would love to hear your thoughts, or we <laughs> would love to hear your thoughts on this four-part Making Moves Motivation video series and on today's video. Which three ways that I shared with you to nourish your spirit have resonated with you today? What are your key takeaways from the entire series? Let's talk about this. Drop a comment below. And if you would like to talk to me personally, simply visit my website, www.tereshayoung.com, where you can book in some time. Again, I'm Teresha Young, your Relationship Master Coach, and I'm here to help us to connect, evolve, and rise together so that you are truly able to have the fullness of love, life, and relationships of all kinds that you desire and deserve. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.